Hi guys, welcome to the another session on automation anywhere. So in the today's session, we are going to learn about web service command that is the SOAP web service and the REST web service command of automation anywhere. So let's get started. And yes, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell icon to get the updates on the latest videos. So now let's move ahead and before jumping into the commands of automation anywhere, let's first try to understand what is a web service. So web service is a type of API that is application programming interface. And it is also very important to understand what is this application programming interface. So application programming interface that is API is a set of rules or protocols to communicate between two applications. So first let's try to understand what does it mean. So, so let's assume that there is a person John who wants to have some good food in a restaurant. So the person John went to a restaurant where the food is being prepared in the kitchen. So we know that John doesn't have direct access to the kitchen. There is one person in between that is waiter which is used for the communication between John and kitchen. So what the waiter will do, the waiter will take the request that is a food request from John and it will send the request to the kitchen and after that in the kitchen the food will be prepared and waiter will send the food from kitchen to John. That is the waiter will send the food response from kitchen to John. So so APIs work in a very very similar way. So let me show you what I mean. So APIs are used for communication between two applications with certain set of rules. So let's assume that there is one application that is application 1. Let's say that application 1 as client and there is one application 2 and let's say that application 2 as server. So these two applications want to communicate between each other. So how they can communicate? They can communicate with the help of APIs. So what the API will do? API will take the request from client and it will send the request to the server and once the request gets processed in the server what the API will do API will send the response to the client from the server so in this way the API works so now let's try to understand this API with a real life example so I will move to a website this is the make my trip website which is used for flight booking so once we provide the from and to details and the date of the journey and if I click on search so what the so what this website did it fetched the details it fetched the flight details from all these airlines that is indigo air asia go air so make my trip is fetching the flight details from these airlines so how do you think these airlines are providing the details to make my trip definitely these airlines are not going to expose their server details to the make my trip because of the security reasons so what these airlines do these airlines expose their apis and the make my trip is using their apis to fetch the flight details to fetch the real time flight details so this is one real time example of api and there are several types of apis and web service is one of the types of api so let me write it down as well web service is one of the types of API which supports HTTP protocol. So let me write it down as well which supports HTTP protocol. So now that we are familiar with APIs and the web service let's jump into the types of web service. So types of web service. So we have two types of web service. So first one is SOAP that is simple object access protocol and the second one is RESTful web services. So the second one is RESTful web services which uses REST as architecture style. So REST stands for representational state transfer. So we have these two types of web services with us and definitely these two web services differ in the way how they are designed. They differ in the architecture style and they also differ in the way how the message is sent to the server and how we receive the response from the server. So we will look into these two web services one by one. So first let's start with SOAP. 
so soap uses xml language to send the request to the server and in return it also gets the xml response from the server and it uses http protocol so let's look into some sample soap web services on which we can work using automation anywhere so this is a sample soap web service which we will use today in the automation anywhere command so this is a calculator web service and it has provided four operations of the calculator web service that is add divide multiply and subtract so if i open this add what we get so this is the request this is the soap request which is sent from client to the server so we have seen this client and the server so this is the xml request which is sent from the client to the server and this is the response which is received from the server to the client so here you can see that there are two integers that is int a and int b which is sent to the server in the int we need to pass the two integers which we want to add and in the response there is one add result that is here it will be the result of the addition of two integers which we will be sending and yes as i mentioned it uses is http protocol so let me write it down as well soap uses xml to send request to the server in return it gets xml response and it uses http protocol for communication definitely since web service uses http protocol for communication and soap is a type of web service so that's why it also uses http protocol for communication now let's look into a bit more into this calculator web service so if i open this service description so what we have so this is a wisdel file so what this means wisdel stands for web service description language so it describes all the methods which are available in web services with request and the response times so all the soap web service have the wisdel file so let me write it down as well wisdel web service description language and it describes methods available in web service with request and response types okay so this is about the soap web service now we will jump into the automation anywhere and we will look into the soap web service command so for that i will create a new task so let's click on new workbench and from here let's select the soap web service command so this is my soap web service command so let's double click on that so we have the command open with us so the first step is to enter complete uri and here we have been provided the example what will be the structure what will be the format of the uri so if you know this format you can put the uri directly over here and in case you don't know we can definitely build the uri from here so let's proceed with this build uri and here we need to give the wisdel uri so the format is like this so we have seen just now this is the similar type of format it is asking for the wisdel uri so let's copy this from here and let's paste it over here so we have provided the wisdel uri step 2 is to connect so let's click on connect so once we have clicked on connect all these details have been populated so we need to select a service so if i expand this one there is one only one service available that is the calculator so we will select this one so there are two ports found so we have calculator soap and calculator soap 12 so let's proceed with the calculator soap port and the fifth option with us is the operation so what type of operation do we want to do so let's move with the add one and here we need to give the values so int a and int b values we need to provide so we have already seen over here 
we have seen over here int a and int b we need to provide these two values so let's give the value so if i click on this row int a row so int a gets populated over here and we need to give the value let's say i provided the value 20 let's click on update and let's give the value of int b so let's click over here int b and let's say we have given the value as 30 let's click on update and now we have provided all the details so we'll click on save so our uri is created so if you don't know this format you can click on build uri and you can provide the details over here and yes if you know this uri you can directly put over here so our step one is over so we have provided complete uri now the next step with us is to provide the authentication details so if the web service which you are using is secure in that case you need to provide username password domain name and client certificate details over here and for the web service which we are using we don't need to provide these authentication details so let's skip this one and the step two with us is to test the output so let's click over here and this is the output which we received and this output data is of XML type which is very similar to this one so this is the output which is similar to the output which we received in the automation anywhere and you can see add result we got the result as 50 since we have provided 20 and 30 as integers and their addition is 50 so that's why we got this result so let's click on cancel as of now so the next option with us is to provide output details and if we wish we can save the result as XML so let's click on browse and let's provide XML details so I'm going to give the name as XML result and after that we have two options with us if we want to extract the whole response so if we select this whole response this whole response we will receive and if we select this selected response then in that case we can get only the integer value of the result so we will look into each of them one by one let's proceed first with the whole response and this whole response the result of this whole response we want to assign to a variable so let's select the variable from here since we have not created any variable let's select this clipboard so what the automation anywhere will do the automation anywhere will assign this whole response to the clipboard variable so let's click on save and now my soap request is ready so i will quickly add a message box over here to see the result so let's press f2 and let's in the system variable let's select the clipboard let's press insert and let's click on save so i will save the task now web service demo let's click on save so my task is ready and i will quickly run the task to see the results so let's click on run so my task is started to run and yes we got the result so this is the message which got displayed with the response so this is the response which we got from automation anywhere and you can see over here add result is 50 because we have provided the two integers as 20 and 30 and addition is 50 so you can see from here these two responses XML responses are similar right so in this way we worked with automation anywhere soap web service command and we got the whole response over here so let's click on ok let's move to automation anywhere again and also we had provided the path of the xml file we had provided the xml file path over here xml result so let's see this xml result as well so this is the xml result which got generated so this is the xml result and again this is similar to the response which is available over here okay so this result and this result is similar so as of now what we are doing we are capturing the entire response now what if I want to capture only this result this integer only I want to select so how we can select so let's see how we can do that using automation anywhere so for that let's select this selected response and and let's click on this select view response and here we need to provide the XPath expression. So what is this XPath? So XPath is used to navigate through the elements in a XML document. So let me show you what I mean. So let's expand this one. 
So let's expand this one and this is the complete response and I want to extract only this 50 and this 50 is inside this element. So all these are the elements and I want this 50 which is inside this add result. So we need to provide the XPath expression to navigate to this add result element. So as soon as I clicked on this add result, this XPath expression is created automatically. Okay, so we have provided the XPath details. So let's click on save and let's save the task. So now what will happen in our command, in our command only the selected response that is only 50 will be displayed inside the clipboard variable. Okay, so let's click on save and let's save the task and I will run the task once more. So my task is started to run and you can see in the message box the 50 is displayed. Why? Because we have selected the option as selected response. So let's click on OK. So we have seen this SOAP web service command and we are good with that. Now let's move to the REST web service. This is the REST web service command so this is the rest web service command let's open this one and before jumping into this rest web service let's first try to understand what is this so I will write as rest so we have seen in the soap as soap uses XML to send request to the server and in return it gets the XML response but it is different in the case of rest rest doesn't uses XML to send request to the server and in return it doesn't get XML response so how the rest works so in case of rest we need a URL and we need methods methods like get post delete etc so in this way rest works so what does it mean let me show you with the help of an example so this is a demo rest web service so we have here a lot of rest web services available over here so how does it work suppose we want to get some data from the server so in that case we will use get method Suppose we need to write some data into the server. So in that case, we will use the post method. And if we want to delete any data from the server, in that case, we will use this delete. We will use this delete method in that case. And we can send the request to the server with the help of URL. So let's first understand this get method. So for this get web service, this is the request. So this will be the request. And in response, we will get this response. And this is the JSON response. Okay. So what we had seen in the SOAP web service. So this was sent as the request. This is the XML which is sent as the request. And the XML we were receiving and the response. So so in this case in the rest case this will be the request along with the server and this will be the response so let me show you how the request will look like so first we need to give this is the server name and after that we need to give this request so let's copy this one and what is the result so this is the response which we received and this is similar to the response which is available over here so this is the response in json format so let's see this using automation anywhere so we need to first provide the uri so yes this will be our uri in our case so once we provide the uri all these details will be fetched over here so let's give the uri so we have provided the URI and in the request you can see if I click on header and if I click on URI. So all these details have been fetched over here from this URI. So this is the server URL requres.in. So this is the server URL and this is the port number and this is the URL path. So this is the server. So this is the server URL and all these, all these are the URL path. Okay. So we have provided the details over here. So this is the request section. If I move to parameters, so the automation anywhere automatically selected this parameter as page and its value as two from this URL. 
and the next thing to focus is the method and the automation anywhere automatically selected this method as get so if I open this drop down we have four methods available over here and automation anywhere selected this get method since we have we are using this API we are using this URL having the method as get so automation anywhere selected this get method and the get request is used to fetch the data which is already available inside the server and this is the response section so we need to provide a variable name over here as well where the response will be stored so let's select a variable again let's select clipboard since we have not created any variable let's save the task let's move it a bit down and I will disable these two commands as of now let's add a message box over here again let's enable this let's save the task and and now I will run the task so what we will receive in the response so we will receive the response as since we have selected this get web service so the response we will receive in the JSON format like this one okay so we will receive the response like this so let's run the task so my task is over and this is the response which we received and this is similar to the response which is available over here and this is available as a JSON format so let's click on OK again so we have seen this SOAP web service and the REST web service command under automation anywhere so that's all for this session and if you have any query please put in the comment section below and I will try to solve your queries thank you have a nice day